Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Maybe you've seen these reports that automakers have some of the highest levels of debt of any industry. And I guess that you've probably seen those analyses that say this is going to drive them out of business. Some of those reports are downright scary. You'd think that the automotive apocalypse is right around the corner. And admittedly, on the face of it, the numbers look horrifying. General Motors has $179 billion in debts and liabilities. Ford has $208 billion. And Volkswagen has a mind-numbing $382 billion in debt. Sounds like a disaster, right? But I say, so what? And here's why I say that. Virtually all companies have some level of debt. They borrow money to build plants and equipments and to buy the raw materials and inventory that they need to make products or provide services. If they did not go into debt to get that money, they would not be able to make those investments and they wouldn't be in business. In fact, no doubt you have debts. If you bought a car, you probably borrowed the money to pay for it. Same if you bought a house. You probably went into debt to buy a house that costs more than your annual income. But you bought that car because it lets you get to your job. Buying that car helps you make money. Your house allows you to live in a comfortable lifestyle, and when you sell it, you'll likely get all that money back and then some. You didn't mind going into debt to buy a car or a house because you knew that they would pay off for you. Well, the same goes for car companies. They go into debt to buy the things that they need to make their business grow. You've heard that old saying, you need to spend money to make money. The problem occurs when the debt gets out of hand, when you borrow too much, when you owe more money than you can possibly pay off. So with all their mountains of debt, are automakers really teetering on the brink of bankruptcy? Or can they pay it off? Well, let's dive into the annual reports and 10K SEC filings of some of the top automakers in the world and see what the numbers tell us. And let's start with the Volkswagen Group. As I said, it's got over 382 billion euros in debts and liabilities. VW's debt is bigger than the economies of some countries, like Denmark or South Africa. But it's not a problem for Volkswagen because it has assets in the form of cash and stock and bonds and inventory, and those assets are worth way more than VW's debt. They're worth more than 528 billion euros. So Volkswagen has a positive balance sheet. In fact, it's in positive territory to the tune of 146 billion euros. In other words, if the man came to Volkswagen and demanded it pay off all its debts right now, Volkswagen could pay them off this afternoon and still have 146 billion euros left over. Same goes for General Motors. It has $179 billion in debt, but it also has $245 billion in assets. So GM has a positive balance sheet to the tune of $66 billion. And while Ford has $208 billion in debt, it has $258 billion in assets. And its balance sheet is positive to the tune of $50 billion. And of course, everyone wants to know where Tesla stands. It has over $23 billion in debt, but over $57 billion in assets. So it's $34 billion to the good. In fact, all the automakers that I looked at, including Mercedes and BMW and Honda and Hyundai, as well as GM, Ford, Volkswagen, and Tesla, all have positive balance sheets. Their debt level is manageable. All companies report two different types of debt on their balance sheets, short-term debt and long-term debt. Short-term debt, or what is officially called current liabilities, is everything that a company has to pay off in the next 12 months. So far, all the numbers that I've provided to you are for long-term debt. But even if we only looked at short-term debt, all the automakers have more than enough money to pay it off. They're all solidly in positive territory, so I'll spare you the time from going through all those numbers. So, short-term debt, long-term debt, it doesn't matter. The car companies have got it handled. Now, that's not to say that things can't go to hell in a handbasket in the future, but the debt levels they have now are not a problem. One way that financial analysts compare the debt levels of companies is to use a debt-to-equity ratio. That means they look at how much equity or ownership all the shareholders have in a company compared to how much debt the company has. 
By that measure, Honda is the most financially solid car company. For every dollar that shareholders have in the company, Honda only has 64 cents of debt. Tesla is also very good. It only has 77 cents of debt for every dollar the shareholders have. Ford is at the other end of the spectrum of the companies that I looked at. Four dollars in debt for every dollar in shareholder equity. And maybe that helps explain why Ford stock has been stuck in the doldrums for so long. Most other automakers have around $2.50 of debt for every dollar of shareholder equity, and it's a very manageable level for them. It is worth taking a deeper dive into Ford's and GM's debt levels because, in one way, they are very different from all the other car companies. They have substantial in-house finance companies. They're called Ford Credit and GM Finance, and they provide financing to their dealers to buy cars from the factory, and then they provide financing to their customers to buy those cars from the dealers. In fact, they typically provide the financing to their dealers to build their dealerships in the first place. It's a surefire way to make a lot of money. No other car companies have anything that comes close to Ford Credit or GM Finance. They'd love to have that, of course. Stellantis is feverishly trying to build up its own captive finance company. Mercedes-Benz already has one, but it pretty much only operates in the United States and everyone else is dreaming about having it. Ford Credit and GM Finance borrow huge amounts of money from major financial institutions. In fact, roughly half of the debt on their books comes from their in-house finance companies. And, and this is the most important point of all, they make a lot of money on that debt. Last year, GM Finance made a $5 billion profit on all the money it borrowed. Ford Credit made four and a half billion dollars. So you see, all that debt on their books was actually really good for them. There is one caveat, however, when it comes to Ford, it's overly reliant on Ford credit, which accounts for 100% of all the profits that the company makes. Ford really doesn't make any money selling cars and trucks. It makes all the money providing the financing to sell those cars and trucks. But the point is, there's nothing inherently wrong with debt as long as a company has the assets to cover it. And yeah, you can devise all kinds of scary scenarios about how things will go horribly wrong in the future, but we can also worry about how a future meteorite is going to smash into planet Earth and cause a mass extinction. It's all speculation. And I encourage all of you to keep that in mind the next time you see one of these doomsday reports about how the automakers are drowning in debt.